The first change I'll be making is adding some more content to an individual item. So right now, all we really do is we store a string value that is the content as defined here of the item. So I wanna make this, instead of a string, a different type of object, and I might just call it content. And in that, I wanna have a string text value, but I also wanna add two more values. One is priority, and I wanna add a due date. So let me implement that and I'll be right back. So I've gone ahead and added, created a content type, which holds a text value, the due date and the priority. Um, it only requires the text value to be initialized. And I've gone ahead and set the content right here. But before I can use this, I need to go ahead and run that build command again. So let me go ahead and do that. It failed again. And now let me go ahead and try rebuilding. It failed again. So let's see what the error is. Okay. So let me go ahead and do some research on how to actually implement this because this is not as straightforward as I thought it would be. So it seems like if you want to use a class that you've defined and embed it into an item like we're doing here where we, we have content which we've personally defined, you need to do, you need to annotate it with add embedded like so. So let's see if this works. And there you go, that seems to be working. So let's go ahead and make all the required changes here. So now we have a due date and a priority associated with the item too. It's all stored in this variable type called content, which is inside of item. So we have a content type and it has three different values, the text, the due date and priority. And we can see right here, I created a hello world item and it can be seen right here. So the priority by default is 2.5. Uh, the text is hello world and the due date right now for this one is null. Oh, that's kind of cool actually. You can set the due date right here. Oh wow. Actually, can you update these values? Whoa! You can update these values live. That's actually really cool. Now I want to go ahead and also be able to add some color to the task board. So I want to be able to set up the color value for each column. In order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and create a board column type and that board column type will have a string value, which will be the name. So like backlog in this case, and it will also have a color, which in this case, by default, it's gray. And there you go. So as we can see now, the color of the card changes depending on the column that it's currently in. I think that looks really good. I'm very happy with this. Yeah, it's very satisfying to see the color switch. In order to implement this, all I did was I created a new type called icer column. This is the name of the column and this is the color that's associated with it. And then what I've done is by default, I've initialized every time we initialize the item, I go ahead and set the, bo the board column values. And by default, I have backlog in progress and done. And I also have these, I also set the colors right here. So in the database, you can see right here, I have the board columns. I have the color and the name, all three, all, all three of them are here. I did want to mention that I know all these, some of these values seem very temporary and I'm kind of just giving them some names. Like for example, this, I had to name ICER column because I initially tried to call it board column, but we already have something called board column, which is here. So just to avoid any naming conflicts, I went ahead and just named it ICER column for now. But at the end of the project, I will go back and clean up everything. But for now, I'm just trying to get a MVP out there and running. And then I love going actually back and cleaning everything up. That's my favorite part, to be honest. The next task I want to tackle is being able to edit these tasks. So right now there's no way for me to edit the name or the due date or the priority. I want to be able to somehow click on it. Uh, maybe have like an edit icon right here on the 
right? And when you click on it, it opens up a dialog box where you can edit the name or and the due date and the priority. So let me go ahead and get that started on that and I'll be right back. I have a very proof of concept implementation here. Right next to this hello world name of the task, I have this edit icon. You just click on that and it opens up this dialog box. And I know it looks really bad right now, but I'll make it look better. Um, we have the ability to edit the, the actual name of the task or the text inside of the task, I should say. So like uh, we can do hello world like, wow. And we also have the ability to edit the due date. So we can click on this. This is a pre-made functionality that Flutter comes with. It's from the material design. So we can go ahead and select a date here. Like let's do December 1st, press okay. And then we can also move the slider to set the priority. So let's just set it to be four. And then you can press done and you can see it updates right there. And then as usual, it's just a task that we can move around. The next thing I want to work on is two attributes that I forgot to add to the edit screen. I want to add the board name and the parent item here. I want to be able to change the board name to like a shorter form maybe of the, the text because as I showed before, if you go into an item, it shows the entire text on the top right here. So I, I want to make sure that I can give it a short name so it doesn't take over. And I also want to be able to change the parent item because that basically allows me to move the item from one board to another board um, very easily. So let me go ahead and work on that implementation and I'll be back. I added the ability to change the board name, which is down here. And this is the task. So I can just do this as the task. And this is the board name. Task. So if I click done here, you can see the task name appears here. But when I click on this, you can see that on the top, I see the board name that appears here. So this will be perfect in cases when I have a really long task name like so. I can see that there's some UI issues there, but in that case, I'll just have the short name right over here. I decided to skip on the parent item feature and I wanted to kind of discuss why I decided this. It was getting very involved and there were a lot of edge cases, but I quickly wanted to showcase why I was running into so many issues. So let's say we have a task A. Let's just call this our main task. This is the main one. Let's just call it, let's just say it's M actually. Then let's say we have three tasks here. One, two, three. Let's say task one has two more tasks. Call it one A, one B. Task two, let's say has no tasks. And let's say task three has another task called three so let's just take one of these tasks let's, for instance let's take task three right here let me take a different if we take task three it's right now on in main and one thing to note is that these arrows point both directions because we not only have the parent item for in each item but we also have its children in a sense if we wanted to move three to let's say two that would be pretty easy we would just go ahead and move three. We would move this arrow away and point an arrow to two. That's simple. And then if we want to ever get to 3a, we would have to go first to two, then to three, and then to 3a. But this is where it gets complicated. What if we wanted to move three and we chose something that was below 3a, so something that came down here? Or even let's just take 3a here. So let's say we wanted to move 3 to 3a. What would happen? We would go ahead and remove this and we would point it to 3a. Now what just happened here? We would never be able to access this third task within our main. It's just a dangling task now in a sense. It's like secluded from all the other tasks and there's no way for me to ever really access this. Not only that, but if I click on three, it would open 3A. 
And if I clicked on 3A, it would open 3A. It would keep going in a loop, even if I did access one of them. Finding this loop is the issue and something I don't want to do right now, but it is a classic lead code problem. It is possible to definitely implement, but to avoid complexity for now, I'm going to go ahead and skip over it and move on to my next feature. The next task that I want to work on is deleting an item. So currently we can't do that, but I'm going to go ahead and just create a simple button in the editing, which allows us to delete the item itself. Probably somewhere on this screen right here. See in a bit. Now we're working on deleting items and I just realized that I'm going to have to recursively go through all the items within that item and then check all those items and then keep checking all the items of those items and delete them all one layer by one layer because I don't want to leave any dangling items where they're not somehow attached back to the main page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use a recursive function to iterate through the entire tree and go to the end and then start from the bottom of the tree and start deleting each node and going up. So let me go ahead and get started on that. This is it. I am checking if the item is has any more items inside of it. If it doesn't, it goes ahead and just deletes that item. If it does, it first deletes those individual items and then it deletes itself. Uh, it is a recursive function, so you can see that I call delete item the function within the function itself. Now let's go ahead and test it out. So we only have one item right now. Let's go ahead and add A. And let me just also add B here, even though we won't be using it. Then within A, let's go ahead and add one, two, three. Then within this, we can go ahead and add A, B, C again. And let's also add A and B here. And finally, let's also add C here. When I delete A, it won't instantly go away. Um, I think that has something to do with uh, my settings of how I'm setting the state and it's not going to the database and retrieving the data again. I will have to add that logic, but you can, we, we should be able to see that most of these objects other than B should be gone once I delete, click this delete button right here. So let me just go ahead and click that. And there you go. You can see that the only one left is B. So everything after A, which is what everything that was left was, is gone. Refresh this and you'll see that A is gone. So that's working perfectly. I will make it harder for you to delete. Uh, it shouldn't be one click away. I could end up losing quite a bit of work by doing something like that. So I'll maybe add an are you sure dialog box or something for that uh, when I'm working on fixing the UI implementation. Now that we can edit tasks, I want to be able to edit the columns themselves. I already have this drop down menu where I can click edit, but this isn't functioning correctly right now. So I'm going to go ahead and implement this and it should allow you to not only change the name of the column, but also change the color. So let me go ahead and implement that menu and I'll be right back. And there you go. So I just click on this menu right here. I can click edit and then I can change the name and the color for that column. So I can make it backlog 800 and I can even change the color to let's say purple. And you can see it changed to purple. I can also come down here, click edit on done, done, maybe question mark. And I can make it orange and there you go. And then if I move it over here, it should take that color. Perfect. So now that we have that implemented, we can move on to the next step. 